In today's market, the jazz guitar player has a wealth of options when it comes to selecting amplification. You have the current reissues of the classic valve amps like the Fender Twin, the Deluxe Reverb and a Princeton, as well as amps that are especially designed for playing jazz. They are being created with the idea that jazz is going to be played on them, so from the get-go of plugging your guitar into them, they've got a jazz turn. Jazz. Nice. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to be giving you a brief history of one of the most classic and perhaps the first kind of dedicated jazz amp. Hey everybody, Jamie Holroyd here helping you learn jazz guitar. Welcome to the channel. If you're new around here and you want a structured guide on playing jazz guitar, then please check out the link below to my free beginner jazz guitar guide. Let's talk about Polytones. So Polytones was founded by Tommy Gamina in 1968 and his vision was to amplify guitar players, bass players, keyboard players and accordionists. I know the last one sounds a bit strange, but Gamina himself was actually an accordion player and he actually founded a record label with Joe Pass called Polytone Records and those two recorded a few albums together. So that was really Polytone's ethos was that they were amps designed by musicians for musicians. A lot of musicians had a help in the design of the sound of the Polytone and the functionalities of Polytone so that they would be good amps for working musicians. So. Um, Ray Brown, Joe Pass, Herb Ellis all had a big part in how the amp would eventually come out. Over the years, Polytone experimented with all kinds of amplifiers, guitars and even pickups. In terms of amplifiers, like many companies of the time in the 70s, they started with big stacks and bigger combos with two speakers and then gradually moved to smaller amps as time went on meaning that they could get more power from a smaller package. And of course, that's one thing that if you ask a jazz guitar player what polytones are known for, that is getting a lot of volume in a small and light package, because let's face it, not many of us jazz guitar players are bodybuilders. The most popular polytone model was the Mini Brute. Launched in 1976, the Mini Brute had everything that jazz guitar players had been looking for. They were portable, sounded great, and not too heavy. There were generally four variations of the Mini Brute, occasionally five. Each variation was separated by different features. For example, the Mini Brutes 1 and 2 had 12 inch speakers, where the Mini Brutes 3 and 4 had 15 inch speakers. The 1 had no reverb, so they're not always tremendously useful for us as guitar players, but bass players really like using these because reverb is usually not as important for a bass player as it is to a guitar player. The same thing applied with the 3 and the 4. The 3 had no reverb, but the 4 had reverb. In some catalogues, Polytone says that the reverb was optional, so in theory, you could get a 1 and a 2, and if the 2 didn't have any reverb, then from what I can gather, there would be no difference between a 1 and a 2. So they were the 4 core models. They sometimes added other models to the catalogue, like for example, a Mini Brute 5, which I believe had two 8-inch speakers, and of course the uh, Taurus model, which was made famous by George Benson, which is a really strange uh, looking amplifier. Besides the Mini Brutes, Polytone also had Baby and Teeny Brutes. These had 8-inch speakers, and these later went on to become Mega Brutes. A Mega Brute is basically a Teeny or a Baby Brute, but with more volume and more power. Whilst the Baby and Teeny Brutes sounded great, they were very limited in the volume that you could get from them. So that was one good thing about the later Polytones. They had more volume from a smaller package. That being said, Joe Pass actually used, I think it was either a teeny or a baby brute, so an eight inch speaker on his uh, live at the Jazz Baltica um, live show there. And I'll include a bit of uh, footage from that so you can gather how the amp sounds. It's a fantastic sound from such a small speaker. Despite being a hit with jazzers, 
polytone amps did not do well in guitar player magazines. If you've ever read a review in a guitar player magazine, one of the features in which they mark amplifiers is by their features. Obviously marking an amp like a polytone by their features is almost pointless because most straight ahead jazz guitar players just want a clean dark sound. They don't want distortion or delays or anything like that. So in their response to this, Polytone actually started to put more features on the amps to do better in magazine reviews. These are generally known as the Sonic Circuit Polytones, which are the later models. The design completely changed. They started with blue covers and then went to the black covers with the black metal grills. And these amps, while they were more powerful and light, do not sound the same as the earlier models. So you'll have to try some for yourself, but generally speaking, most jazz guitar players prefer the sound of the older models. But if you need a lot of volume, then the new models still sound good and have got more volume. Another reason why guitar players like to use polytones was that you could find them everywhere. If you were traveling overseas, then you could always get a polytone. Furthermore, Polytones were also very light and easy to transport. So if you had to take a flight somewhere, then you could probably take a mega brew on. And the good thing about using a mega brew is that you could get heard with a band. So that's why guitar players like Munda Lo like to use them. So how do polytones sound? Well, if you've heard Breezing by George Benson, then you've heard the sound of a polytone. Equally, Joe Pass used them. And another player, which I really like who used them, is Clint Strong. Let's have a quick listen to Clint Strong using a Mega Brute now. Conversely, the polytone sound can be their biggest con. If you're looking for an amp that has a transparent guitar sound or an acoustic sound, then polytones are definitely not for you. They do one thing well, which is a classic jazz guitar tone. Thankfully, you can still find them at very reasonable prices on the used market. If you look on Reverb or eBay, then you should be able to get a Mini Brute for less than six, $700 or 500 pounds easily. Of course, they're not desirable. Other guitar players that play rock and blues don't like these amps. In actual fact, the first time I tried a polytone, I hated them. And I actually ended up having three at one point. At the time when I first tried them, I was into blues and rock and the amp did absolutely nothing for me. And after I'd spent a couple of years learning jazz, I really got into them. So it's funny that they have that kind of niche appeal to jazz guitar players, which thankfully, for us being jazz guitar players can save us money because guys that play different kinds of styles are not so much into them. Unfortunately, Polytone seems to have disappeared after Gamina passed away in 2013, but as I said, you can still find a bunch of them on the used market. So if you haven't tried one and you're looking for a budget amp, then I highly recommend taking a punt on one and ideally trying one out if you find one that comes up for sale locally. I'd like to thank jazzguitar.b, Adrian Ingram and Polytone catalogues for helping me with the research of this video. If you found this useful and you'd like more videos like this, then please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this.